Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at U Modeler to make a simple low poly uh, barrel here. So this is just a very simple introduction to uh, U Modeler, and I might make a few tutorials on using U Modeler. So now, what is U Modeler? U Modeler is a, a paid asset here for uh, Unity, and it, it's a little bit pricey compared to some assets, but it, it's you know it's completely worth it in my opinion. Um, while I like the idea of Pro Builder, U Modeler is, you know, far more ahead of that uh, for making your own models and whiteboxing and, you know, even just creating more in-depth models like this, uh, you know, right in Unity. And while I am a fan of Blender, of course, you know, this just uh, is much easier to use in a lot of situations. Or if you're really not interested in getting into Blender for a lot of things, then uh, U Modeler again is a way to go. So I'm just going to show you how to uh, create a very simple low poly barrel and I just googled low poly barrel here to get some reference ideas and you know we're basically just creating something like this a shape um, that's a low poly barrel and we're going to also sort of model in two bands um, just like this here around it. So why don't we go ahead and get started and I'll just delete the one that I already have in the scene and once you have UModeler installed, you can just access it here from the uh, 3D object menu and just create and mesh with UModeler. And if you hit the settings here, you can um, change between a text and an image based. Um, I'm using text just because it, you know it's easier for you to follow along. And also, you know, sometimes I don't know what these are and I don't, I don't like to hunt. Um, I've been using Blender a lot lately, so I'm just sort of coming back to the Unity button. So it's uh, taking a couple minutes for me to get back to that. You can also enable snapping, um, grid snapping, stuff like that, but we don't need that for uh, this case. So we'll just go back to the text-based menu. Oops, and we'll turn that off. Um, and what we're going to do is just add a uh, simple, let's see, cylinder here. And in the cylinder, we can say how many segments we have. I'm just going to go with 16. Um, you can make it a lot less. You could make it, you know, 8 or whatever you want. And I'm just going to click and drag it out and then lift it up here. And that's it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to do anything um, too crazy. I'm going to hit F to sort of cinch that where I want it to be. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just order add some edge loops around this so that we can pull it out. And right now, all we have is faces. So we can go up here to the uh, edge tool. And what we want to do is introduce some loop slices. They're just going to slice around. So we can click loop slice. And you can see it shows up here in yellow right away. And I'm going to roll my mouse wheel up. And it's going to have two. You could have as many as you wanted. Um, don't go too crazy. You might crash Unity if you get you know beyond a certain amount. I'm not sure if there's a limit. But for now, we just want two. So I'm just going to click down, and then that's done. And then I'm going to go over to my edge selection. So we've got, of course, faces that we can select. We've got edges that we can select. And then we have verts that we can select as well. So I'm going to go to Edge Tool. And if I double click on it, we can select the whole loop. And I'm going to hold, I believe, Control and Unity and double click. And now we've got two. So what I want to do is scale these out. So I'm just going to go to the Scale tool here and drag these out bit here so it's something like this and now we have uh, you know a basic barrel shape already now if we want to make this a bit better we could add some smoothing onto it to make it sort of more round especially if you had it more square um, and in order to do that I am just going to select all the faces and I'm sort of slow doing this I'm sure there's faster ways but I'm gonna choose two faces next to each other using control and then hit loop and it will select the whole loop based on that so I'll choose two more hit loop and then choose two more and then hit loop and now we have the whole thing selected fairly easily now we're going to add a smoothing group which basically just makes these faces look more smooth as if it's more round because right now it's sort of um, looking a, a bit squarish so we can do that just by choosing here on surface we have smooth group and I already have a name from before. We just choose Add Group. And it's going to add everything that we have selected into this group automatically. 
So it may not be that easy to see, but it's a bit smoother here. And if I choose um, Remove Group, you can sort of see the shading change. And I'll Control Z that to go back, and now we've got the group smoothed again. Okay, the next thing I want to do is sort of indent these um, faces on the top and the bottom, like push them in so we have a bit of a, a barrel top. And I can do that by just selecting the face. And then I'm going to push F here. And then just grab the bottom, push, uh, what is it, Control in <laughs> Unity. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember how to do this in Unity. And um, Okay, there we go. Now we have both the top and bottom selected. Now we're just going to use the inset tool. So what the inset tool does is takes the shape that you have selected and then creates a selection from the shape of that. So let's just push it first and then see. And now you can see that it's creating an inset of this face. And so this looks good. I can set the exact number here if I want, but I'm not going to because um, this looks good to me. I'm going to hit confirm. Then I want to grab this face and then choose push-pull. So push-pull is going to allow me to push or pull this in quite easily. So I've got about 0.4 there. So why don't we have a look at the bottom. Let's hit F here just to look easier. Okay, so let's grab the bottom. We'll move it into about 0.4 as well. And now we sort of have a uniform shape. So that wasn't too hard. We could, oopsie, I forgot to deselect the top when I did that. Oh yeah. Anyways, I I'm, I'm <laughs> keep selecting one and not the other. Doesn't matter for now. Let's worry about that later. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is um, select, you know, sort of make these pop out, these rims that go around. Um, right here, we just want to have a little more shape going on. So we can do that easily. We could insert more edge loops. We could say here's the edges and we want to insert another um, loop slice like this and then sort of just try and um, position it where we want it to be. Uh, but you know, I, I find that sort of annoying. So what I'm going to do is instead grab this whole loop and grab this whole loop and instead we're going to use the bevel tool. So this is a little trick that um, a lot of 3D modelers use in all kinds of programs. But if we just choose bevel and let's adjust the bevel amount and say you know say 0.1 that looks good to me. I can confirm this and now I have two even edge loops around. And we just want to bring this out a little bit. So why don't we do that? We're going to click all these faces again just by doing control and then choosing loop. And now we want to extrude. We want to bring these faces out. We can do this using the multi push pull tool tool. So they don't call it extrude extrude. They call it multi push pull and that's cool. And we want to use these vertex normals as the direction. So as you can see, it's going to go like this. But if we chose, you know, um, individual polygons, there's going to be some spaces between them, which is cool for certain uh, circumstances. If we want to average the normal, so it's going to be up. Um, so that's not what we want. For now, we just want the vertex normals. So we're going to push it out, and I can set an exact amount here. I'm going to say, say, um, 0.5, which is maybe a bit big, actually. So we'll say 0.23, okay, and then hit confirm. Now we can go down here and do the same thing. We're going to hit control, go loop, and then from the loop we've got the multi push pull tool already open. We just pull it a little bit until let's say 0.3. Looks pretty close to me. And uh, confirm that. Okay, so now we, you know, we have a barrel sort of already set up and you know that wasn't too hard at all we could you know adjust the smoothing groups and you can start adding color and stuff to this but you know we won't do that in this video um, but you know it, it's very easy uh, to do here using UModeler 
Um, you know, it already has a, a mesh collider attached. You can see if we turn it convex, so that's cool. And, uh, you know, we can do our UVs and everything else in here. I won't do that today, but um, that's U-Modeler, sort of in a, in a nutshell.